No, I got it. Okay. Go okay, perfect. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us for Rising Professionals. My name is Felicia Lopez. I'm the events coordinator here at the Medisto Chamber. Um, Deshay, would you go ahead and like to introduce yourself? I'm Deshay McLeod. I'm the president and CEO of Community Hospice, Community Hospice Foundation and CHI Management located here in Modesto. Um, I am not an original Modesto native. I transplanted to this area about seven and a half years ago. I'm a member of the Chamber uh, Board of Directors and glad to be with you guys today. Thank you. And Tim, Tim is our co-chair, so if you could introduce yourself as well, please. Good afternoon, everybody. Tim Dutter, project manager of the Small Business Development Center and economic developer with Opportunity Stanislaw. I'm in my second week over here, uh, enjoying it. I, am, uh, as well as the Shea, I'm not a uh, native to California. I'm from Wisconsin. You can tell when I say it, Wisconsin. <laughs> uh, uh, lived there, did economic development there, Colorado Springs, uh, did it in Washington State, Seattle, and now I'm doing it here in California. So let's talk with everybody. Tim, from you, the North, and your accent, and me from the South, and my accent. <laughs> yeah. Good Make family. A great team. Yeah. I've got the nasal thing going for me. Yes. Anyone miss that you guys were not from California? I'd have to, you know, question, <laughs> especially to Shay. <laughs> exactly. Especially me, Trish. Oh. Yeah. You got the perfect accent no matter what you say. <laughs> No, just wait till I've been there for a visit and then I return. Oh my goodness, that, that Southern girl really comes out. So. You know, I'm born and raised here, but my mom's from Illinois and we used to back to see family every few years. I spend time there and I don't know if it's just growing up with my mom, but I start talking like I'm from Illinois after a while. <laughs> okay, and then Trish. I guess, yeah, I'll just go. I'm Trish Christensen, President and CEO of the Modesto Chamber of Commerce. Really happy to have you all here today. Awesome. And then, so we're just going to go around and introduce ourselves. Feel free to unmute and jump in. I'll start with Jennifer. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jennifer Young with Mid Valley Promotions. We are a local uh, promotional products distributor. I worked alongside Peggy O'Donnell for 14 years now, and I'm so happy to see all you guys. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Hey, Jennifer, it's so nice that you came back this month. Thank you. We're glad to have you. Yes, Tashe, thank you so much. Okay, uh, Anna. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Anna Felix from Turlock, California. I am a smart money strategist and I help people uh, figure out the best way to grow their money. Awesome, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Deanna? Hi, everyone. My name is Diana Ringer and I represent uh, the UFF Money Max account, which shows people how to collapse uh, time frames when paying off their debt. So I, I add to the financial literacy conversation. Awesome. Okay. And forgive me if I do not pronounce your name correctly on here. Uh, Alu? Yeah, you can call me Alu for short. Um, I'm also um, one of my new colleagues, Tim. I'm, I work with Opportunity Stanislaus uh, as a marketing and special projects coordinator. Awesome, welcome. Joshua? Hey guys, my name is Josh Allen. I'm a business alignment manager with IT Solutions Curry. We're an IT managed services provider in Modesto. Good to see you again, Josh. Uh, Shannon? Hi everyone, um, my name is Shannon. I am a digital marketing, oh, I'm getting a phone call as I speak. Um, I do digital marketing at Gerbo Designs, um, and we are a brand communications agency here in Modesto. Yeah, so you just recently joined her, correct? Yeah, um, I have been with her since November, so just a few wow. months now. Congratulations. She's awesome. I love Thank Sally. You. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and uh, Ron Nell, if I'm saying that correctly, correct me if I'm wrong. I should be okay. okay. Hey, my name is uh, Ronil Chandra. Uh, based in Modesto, I am a supply chain 
and logistics uh, sales professional, and I'm happy to join you guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. So the way that we are structuring this uh, today, we are going to be having a topic of discussion. Um, we will try to get a speaker in here. We've had some in the past, the last couple of meetings that we've had, but we're going to we're, this is still fairly new, and so we're still kind of filtering out what um, we're doing every session. So this time we will be um, discussing a topic. Tim, uh, would you like to start and lead that now, or would you like me to kick it off for you? Go ahead and kick it off. I can't see the agenda. I don't have it on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no agenda today. So today uh, we are going to be discussing um, just some things that professionals are facing nowadays, especially with the transitioning and everything that's going on this past year. Um, the topic that we want to talk about was taking time to look down the road of your career path and how's that look for each individual. And it looks different in every stage of life, whether you're just starting, or you've been in business for a while or even switched careers. So um, we'd just like to go ahead and go around. Um, Tim, how about you? See, seeing as you just transitioned to a new position yeah. as well. It's right up my alley. Um, I'll just kind of tell you guys my story, I guess. So I um, I moved here about eight months ago. I took a job with the city as economic development manager. Uh, about a month ago, you know, we, we, we kind of came to a, a, a standstill, basically. Um, and, and I left the city and I picked up over here with the SBDC pretty quickly. In just a few weeks, I came in, did a quick interview, and they brought me on board to help. Also, the temp is a temporary transition job. Um, with some plans down the road for the future. But uh, um, it's one of those moments where you kind of got to decide. I mean, I, I mean I, everybody on this call has probably done this at some point. You're kind of standing there in life and you're like, which direction, you know, do I want to go? Um, and I had to ask myself that. Do I see myself working in public government and staying at the city level or even at the county level for public government? And if you guys know me, you know my personality, I just don't kind of fit into the box of public government. And that's okay. Like some people are really good at it. They're very structured. They have an eight o'clock mindset to a five o'clock mindset. I'm not like that. I check emails at midnight if I wake up. Sometimes I come into the office at nine. Sometimes I come in at Saturday. Sometimes if my kid has jujitsu, I'm going to leave at three o'clock and take him because I want to go watch it. And I just kind of operate that way. And I've always done that to me in the job. Um, and I'm just rattling off some things, you guys, and telling you guys, this is kind of this conversation that's going to get you guys thinking. Um, some people really, you know, are more focused on the time. Uh, to me, a job, it's, it's, it's about the results. It's project oriented. Are you getting things done? You know, in the atmosphere that I grew up in, I come from the private sector. It's kind of like, get your stuff done. We don't care when you're here. Public government's not like that. You know, you're expected to be in your office and have office hours. That didn't really jive with me. So, um, you know, my boss and I kind of just said, I just kind of said, it's never going to happen, man. It's got to happen. And I said, it's not going to work. Um, so, you know, when I first said, came home and I said to my wife, I'm not working there anymore. You know, of course your spouse usually is going to flip out and go, what's going on? And I was very calm and I'm like, you know, I probably will be working somewhere within a month. I'm not worried. And, and that's how it kind of went down. Uh, which, you know, I'm, I'm kind of making it easier than it was, I guess. For me, it was easy, but of course my wife was concerned. What about our bills? What are we going to do? What's your future look like? And I'm kind of going, I know who I am. I know what I want to do. I'm just not in the right spot. Um, but sometimes, you know, thinking big picture, I think you've got to step back and look at where you're at and say, is this where I want to be? And if it's not, that's okay. But then you need to start working towards where you want to go. And I just kind of felt like I wasn't doing that. And, you know, my work could feel it six months ago when I'd come home and be like, I don't want to do this. I, I don't see myself doing this for 25 years. And they always say, if, you're, if you want your boss's job, you're in a good place. And I used to tell Jalen, I don't want your job, man. I don't want to be the director of community and economic development. I know what you do. I know what it entails. It's not for me. I don't want to go that way. I, just, I never will want to go that way. So I've kind of hit as far as I can go here. You know, I mean, do I see myself being an economic developer at the city uh, 15 years from now? Absolutely not. So I was on the wrong path. I had to jump off, get on the right one. When you do that, you've got to have some guts. It, it takes a lot of um, looking at yourself and, and being confident in yourself. Um, and that's, I think that's a big part of it. And immediately I knew when I first started working here a couple of weeks ago, I'm like, I got to get my confidence back because I know I have it, but man, if I don't have it, I'm not really supposed to be, and I'm not operating at the level that I need to be. Um, but anytime you transition or anything, you're kind of doubting yourself and second guessing. And I've always counseled people and said, don't do that. You know who you are. You know, you're good at these things. You're just not in the right place. 
So anybody that's on this call that's kind of felt that way or has had a similar position or is in that position right now, um, love to get your guys' thoughts on that and kind of what it takes to kind of to move forward. And I've had this several other times in my career where I've had good pay, good at my job, but I'm like, I know that's not where I want to be. And I've had to kind of jump. And a few times in my career in the past, I've had to take pay cut. And that's, a, again, another conversation with your family where you're like, look, we're going to go down at first, but I know we're going to go up later. And this is how we get there. And to convince them of it. Um, and you got to have the confidence to do it. And you've got to be strong. and sturdy. But like I said, I'd love to get it. Um, some of your guys' input, if anybody else has transitioned recently or if you've gone through something like in the past and kind of if you're happy where you are now, if you're feeling like maybe you need to jump ship from where you are now to something different, now's a good time to do it. Uh, we know what the economy looks like. I analyze economics for a living. We know right now that there's more jobs out there than there probably ever are going to be, including hybrid models where you don't have to be in the office all the time, so it's going to be two days in and two days out. Um, so like I said, I want to get, I want to hear from some of you guys on kind of what you think of that. Um, and if you've had, like, if, like I said, if you're there now, or if you've had it in the past, or if you're thinking about it and can you get your guys' opinion on that, and then I will step back and stop talking a little bit. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. I could actually say, uh, personally myself, I'm actually going through a transition now in terms of, um, job responsibilities. And I think I was in the same boat. Um, I started with IT solutions six years ago and they hired me for new business, but because of economic times and uh, certain uh, just environments that came up, uh, I ended up taking over account management for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a period of time where I was very uninterested in the job at hand because uh, it wasn't what I was hired to do. And I was always leaning towards marketing and, and, you know, building the website and, reaching out to new customers and not so much of being a, a farmer, but being more of a hunter. And um, really what happened was I probably could have jumped ship and, and kept searching for jobs. Um, but I ended up working with my boss and they're very understanding and they know people's skill sets. And instead of just keeping you where uh, you maybe do well, but you're just unhappy is, is not smart for me or their business. And uh, we ended up creating the, the job that I needed and, and getting back into marketing. And now I'm a business alignment manager where I'm solely in charge of new business. Uh, so sometimes, you know, you can create the job yourself within wherever you're at as well. Yeah. Thanks for that, Josh. So you went about it a little bit different way. You kind of, you probably had to have kind of like a, that heart to heart one on one with one of your, with your employer and kind of say, look, I can do this. I don't like it. Well, it's, it's, um, yeah. I mean, cause honestly, I love the company. They, everybody there, the culture there is great. It was literally just the job at hand was not my expertise and or something I wanted to do. Um, but it wasn't like I wanted to leave the company. I wanted to find a spot for me. And it's 2021. I think a lot of people would be surprised about approaching your boss or owner about these things, about how open they are. It's not, you know, 1950 where they're like, just do your job, get your paycheck, go home. They, mm -hmm. they, they understand nowadays that culture is very important and uh, putting people in the right positions and making them happy. They can be 10 times more productive doing something they enjoy. Um, you know, and, and it really comes from that. So. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for that, man. So Deshay, you've got a lot of employees that report uh, to you. How many employees do you have? And do you have kind of any, ex I mean, you've got to have a lot of experience in working with these, with working with employees. Do you kind of want to throw in your, in your two cents and kind of let us know, you know, some of those, some of the, uh, what you think about it, you know, some of your experience? Yeah, um, I have a little over 300 employees. I have 11 direct reports, and that includes my executive assistant. So I've seen uh, 10 senior leaders that are running all different operations of across the three companies. Um, I love to promote from within if the person is the right seat uh, on the bus for that, you know, for that position and your right culture. Um, it really boost our culture and employ morale when they see one of their coworkers being elevated into a position um, and having a step up. I've also seen managers fail when they've moved into a management role as well, because they like came to me and they said, I, I am ready to do this job. I can do this. I can manage this. And, um, and inadvertently, 
And even though I try and coach them and I have other people talk to them as well, and all of my new managers are assigned a mentor for at least a year. And that's an experienced senior leader within our organizations that mentors them that first year because they get it, it's easy to get into to pitfalls or um, personnel issues primarily, you know, or they get a little overwhelmed because they're still trying to do their job and, and not managing the operation of that department as well. So some people can't, can't really take that step back. But I really encourage people to work outside the box. Um, we're very collaborative here. When we get around the table and I said, okay, guy, and I tell them all the time, I do not have the best ideas. The best ideas come from you guys. We all throw it out there. We throw it on the wall, see what's going to stick. We massage it a little bit to which we ever come up with our project. And if you can work in an environment like that and you have the ability to um, have a supervisor or a boss that can recognize that talent and utilize that talent, you can really grow as an individual. Um, I, I give a lot of people, I say, just take this project, run with it. Let's see what you can do with it. You know, they, they're not... I had somebody come to me and they said, well, I'm not really sure how to do that. And I said, uh, get out and do some research, you know, not going to hold their hands. Sometimes I throw them into the deep end of the pool and, and I want them to be in the deep end of the pool so they can learn to swim a little bit. I'm always there to pick them up and I'm not going to let them get their nose bloody or anything. And I'm going to support them along the way. And, you know, I'm not going to be critical if they've missed the mark, you know, I want to kind of show them where the mark really is when they finish that project. So um, if you can get into that in type of environment, I was very fortunate to work for in an organization that gave me many opportunities and they came and they asked me to do something. And I said, I don't have the experience to do that. That's not my forte. I, I don't want to do it. And they kept saying, yes, we need you there. Um, so I, I've worked in great situations um, in the legal field. I had a lot of opportunities for people to take me under their wing and um, and push me along as well. So the only other thing is, you know, just remember, you know, to be a lifelong learner, regardless of where you are, right? You know, doesn't matter where you are in your career. Don't be afraid to jump ship and change careers completely. I've taken some um, 180s in my professional career uh, when people looked at me and they said, what in the heck are you doing? But an opportunity opened and if it's something that interests you and you feel that that passion for it in your heart, you know, just take the leap. If you you only fail if you don't try. So um, just want to throw that out there. Did that answer your question, Tim? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 300 employees is a, is a lot to manage. Um, and that's that's a whole other topic we could do is managing employees. Um, we've all dealt with, with employers, with managers that are difficult. We could all tell stories about how we got around that. Um, right. But one of the challenges I've had in the past is managing employees where there just wasn't the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Synergy, I guess. We'll go with the generic term like that. Uh, right. Just weren't jiving. And um, I kind of just want to know what to do. I'm like, how do I break through these guys? And they're, you know, 15, 20 years older than me. I'm pretty laid back, but being direct, I had a problem a little doing that. And I come from the army where I managed 10 soldiers. You'd think I'd be way to do this, but I'm not like that. Um, and I needed to be a little bit more. And I, I found that a challenge for me um, as well. But like I said, we can table that uh, for a whole nother topic. I think Manage, managing employees and some of the, uh, um, the challenges in doing that, especially during COVID, I think, because it's so easy for people right now to take advantage of COVID. Um, and I know you guys can all relate to this where people are, I'm not comfortable coming in. You're like, dude, I've been picking up your work for two months, man, because you know, you're not here to cover the phones. Uh, I need some help. So we, it's really tricky right now. I think to know who's sincere and who's kind of taking advantage of it. Probably all of us have a little bit. I mean, come on. It's, it's hard to get in eight hours. At a normal day, but You can, um, but do we probably shave time here and there a little bit? I think we all do, to be honest. Um, but that's a whole different topic. Um, we got a lot of people on the call. Anybody else want to chime in and, and tell us a quick story or something interesting or your own opinion on that or experience with it? I just totally switched careers. I uh, was managing a hotel down in Southern California. And uh, during COVID, my husband and I have just looked at each other and we're like, what are we doing down here? down and look up for a second and breathe and I totally switched careers and now I'm doing digital marketing um, and I've been managing time like you said now is the 
time to do it. And my husband's kind of going through that process of, of You're having a bit of a mic issue, Shannon. Yeah, I'm so okay. I thought it was just me for a second. I was waiting to see. We got specks of that. Is that better? I, did. I got part there of it. You go. This transition. Oh, oh there. Now we worry about that. That's no, there you go. Okay. I just have to have some it. That's weird. Take uh, it from the top. Okay. Yeah, I got some of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I totally switched careers. I was uh, managing a hotel down in Southern California um, and up until November, October 31st, actually. Um, and during COVID, we closed for two months and we just were, my husband and I were finally able to slow down and kind of look up for a second and think like, what are we doing here? Is this the career that we want? Um, is this making us happy? Is this where we want to live? All of those things that we just were like, had our heads down and we were just working as hard as we could um, for a long time. So this gave us a really good opportunity to just kind of rethink that and um, give us the chance to kind of redirect ourselves. So we moved up here where we grew up, um, both of us and both of our families are here in Modesto um, and started totally new careers. Now I'm doing digital marketing, which is not what I went to school for or not what I have done before, but um, it was just a really amazing opportunity. I couldn't say no to, and he's doing the same thing right now. He is completely changing his career path as well. So it's just a really cool time. Like a lot of people don't get this kind of opportunity where things slow down a little bit where you can kind of reassess. And I think it's, it's cool. It's awesome. Hey. You know, I think when we're growing up, um, and I know I'm older than you, so my parents are older than your parents, but in their generation, you know, it was their mindset that you pick a career and that's what you just do for yeah. 40 years, right? Yeah. Not so the case in our environment right now. It is not uncommon to completely switch careers and, and take that leap. Um, and, and I think the best advice I can give is, if you know it's right and it's good for you or you mm -hmm. and your family, then don't worry about the critics out there and the people that are judging your decision. Just just stay true to your path and you'll be very successful, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I think Tim touched on that is this, you know who you are and where you want to go mm -hmm. in your journey of career. You ultimately will find that path, even if you, you know, transition to something different. I myself has transitioned, um, but the chamber, I've been at the chamber for about a year, a little over a year now. Before that, I was event planning locally. And before that, I was a preschool teacher for nine years. Oh, So it was okay. a totally different career switch, um, helping in a different facet, um, but I love it. And um, like Tina said, I found something that I know what I wanna do. I love children. I still love children. I love the educational field. Um, but this is helping me to express myself in a different way and using skill sets I didn't know I had. And so it's been a little bit of a journey myself, but I'm really enjoying it. And you start to find things out about yourself you didn't know. So yeah. and whether great, you recognize great. it or not, you're, you're, you're building experiences and skills that will culminate over your professional career that one day you're going to wake up down the road and go, Oh my gosh, yes, that we are a sum of our experiences, right? Mm -hmm. And all of that you're building and taking with you. So, you know, I've been from a paralegal to an orthopedic sales rep to a private owner in retail and commercial, um, you know, so I, I've kind of been all over the place as well. But that's makes, that makes me who I am today. And all mm -hmm. the experiences, we just take all of that experience and roll it up um, to then add to who we are as a leader, not only maybe mm -hmm. in our business, but in the community as well as um, as a manager as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other stories anyone would like to hear? I'd like to hear everybody else's stories. I know Shannon's mm -hmm. was cool. I'm like, I love hearing that. I'm like, I I'm together with her and 
get my wife and take her husband out to lunch because we're we just did the same thing with John. I remember my wife looking at me going, Are we really gonna move to California? I'm like, Yeah, we are. <laughs> it's it's gutsy because you're like, Yeah, we're gonna get up and go, you know. Um, and you get here and you're like, I told you it, 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 every time I've jumped ship, it's always gotten better. I've never gone backwards. Mm-hmm. And it looks like you might sometimes, but every time I've left, it always just gets better when I end up somewhere new. So yeah. Uh, yeah, some more stories because that one was, that was a perfect one. And they came back to Modesto, which is what we love to hear in economic development. We're like, go away, go to college, go do your thing, but come back. You know, you've got lots of opportunity here. Yeah. And bring your family back here and do it here. That's good for the economy. <laughs> That's exactly hey, what we did. Renee, are you unmuted? Are you wanting to share? <laughs> and then Anna's next. Awesome. So uh, I moved to Modesto five years ago. I'm originally from Fiji. And uh, yeah, uh, I had been, uh, and I'm going to talk uh, about uh, not so much uh, transition to different careers, but what I did was I started my I started uh, as a back office uh, support in terms of uh, shipping documentation for a manufacturing company, and uh, I saw the industry as a huge uh, opportunity to learn and grow. So that's where I continued with. I did operations, I did, uh, you know, port operations, I did uh, customer side documentation and export and import. And finally, I had an opportunity to transition into sales, which was amazing because I kept on growing, understanding the different needs. And uh, when I finally reached my peak in Fiji, there was anywhere else to go. So I decided to move to California with my family, uh, move to Modesto, uh, and uh, have good opportunities to move out, but I can't seem to move away from Modesto. I love the place, uh, love the people, nice, uh, you know. And uh, I think what COVID has done for us is uh, I recently had an opportunity to work for a company which previously wasn't possible because they wanted somebody to be based in, in a certain territory. But with COVID now, I can remote sell, I can help people. You know, sitting in Modesto, I can be working with customers in San Francisco, in, in LA for that matter. So I think that's what, it is something which is new uh, for a lot of salespeople, for a lot of operations people, but something which is fascinating. And and, and I see, you know, which gives you an opportunity to stay here and, and, and just keep on developing. So yeah, that's about me. Talk about a jump. That's a real jump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got asked the question a lot when I started, when I moved there and when I started talking to people, I said, hey, I'm from Fiji. They said, okay, so why do you want to move from Fiji into Modesto? You know, so. <laughs> it's, no, it's, I, need, it's... I need to connect you with a husband and wife that works for me, uh, one in each, uh, in two different companies under uh-huh. me, um, because they moved from Fiji. <laughs> and they're just great people. So I, I need to connect you guys. Awesome. Awesome. I'd love that. Uh, they, they're, a, they're a young, cute family. They're just, you know, have a couple of kids. And, um, but they moved to Modesto, started working for um, one of our organizations. And that's the only job they've ever had while they've been in, in the U.S. So awesome. I'm very honored about that. Awesome. So. Yeah. Yeah. A uh, lot, of, lot of Fijians here. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I think uh, Modesto has been really good to us very accept, accepting of us and, and yeah, we love the people. So yeah, yeah. awesome. Great cool. to be part of the community. We're happy to have you. Thank you, Renil. Anna? Awesome. Yeah, well, th- these are great. Um, I've been really enjoying everyone's stories. Um, I actually got forced into making a change and sometimes that happens um, and not for not for great reasons, but I became a widow about 10 years ago and when that happened, we, I had just previous, we'd had a really severe car accident. And so lots of things, but sold the company and had a company for over 20 years and went looking for help with finances because I really needed to start over. I had, you know, mounting hospital debt. It was, it was a very difficult situation. And when I went looking for um, help with my finances, I just didn't find someone that would like walk me through it and explain it to me and answer my questions. And so what it did for me was I thought, you know, I bet a lot of other people feel this way. So maybe I should become the person I'm looking for. I don't know if I could, do that, but maybe that would work. And so um, over three years, got 
the training and, you know, the licensing and all the things that I needed. And now I, I do it and I love it. And if you would ask me back then, if that's, you know, something I would do, I would have said, no, I had been a teacher and then a business owner. And, um, but now I love it. And I love empowering people with, you know, really good, solid financial knowledge and, and helping them create a great future moving forward. But, you know, again, it's not something that I envision myself doing. So it's kind of true, you know, in, in my case, it was just, you know, necessity created the need, but you just never know. You don't want to sell yourself short on, is this something that I could do? Uh, for me, I was passionate enough about it. And, and because I had felt the, the tremendous need, I just went for it. Um, so it, it can have, you know, great um, results just going out there. And even if you're forced to do it. That's, that's a pretty cool story. Good point. Yeah. Can I become the person I'm looking for? I love that. <laughs> yeah, and like you said, you probably thought maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. It that's worked really out. Cool. So, yeah. <laughs> really cool. And you had so much uh, adversity to overcome and you did. So that's impressive as well. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So, Lou, how hey, about you? Yeah, so I'm a little different compared to uh, many of you. I'm, I'm very early on in my career. Uh, something that I'm currently doing, uh, being early on, is just being a sponge, right? Uh, Deshea talked about just learning new skills. You're always developing, even internally and outside work. Uh, for instance, I'm taking a, a coding class. Just I've always wanted to learn coding, right? Um, so just being open to different opportunities. Maybe there's a career change in the future. Uh, but as of right now, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied where, where I'm at. I'm learning a lot. Um, and uh, it's, as uh, Tim said, I do foresee, my, I do see myself in my boss's role. So that's a good position to be at. You're in a good spot, Alou. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tim, are you going to let Dave know he wants his job? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he wants Dave's. I think he wants Katie's. Alou, which one? No, no. <laughs> I'll I'll take uh I'll take Dave's. Dave's, all right. Yeah. All right. You you can get Katie's. <laughs> <laughs> she just had an opening. She's uh she's leaving, so they they did that already. Uh, I didn't don't, I didn't throw my hat in the ring for that one. Um, not quite my cup of tea, but it's in my purview. But uh, we'll see who we get. Hopefully, we get somebody awesome. If you guys don't know, we're hiring a new executive director for the small business development center. I think they're in their final interviews. They've got it down to two or three, I believe, and they're going to select two. So we're eager to see who our boss is going to be. Yeah. You know, I had a senior leader that was interviewing somebody and this happened just about three, four years ago. And they said, Hey, if you got a minute, will you pop in on the interview? I'd like to get your, you know, your perspective and just pop in and say hi. And they wanted my perspective later. And so I went into their office and introduced myself and was just chatting a little bit with this individual. And probably two minutes into the conversation, she said, so I was asking her what her career goals were. And she goes, well, um, in this many years, I want his job. And in this many years, I want your job. And I thought, you know what? That's pretty bold in an interview, you know? So, but it doesn't make you the right person for that job, even though I admired her, her boldness and everything. So, um, you know, there's a first for everything still today. Um, so yeah, I, I just, I, it's like, take me back just a little bit. People may think that, but it's, it's not always that they come out and they just tell you to your face. You know, yes, not definitely. when you're standing in the front door, that's, you got a right. timing <laughs> issue there. Right. And you're trying to get in the door, you know, right. when you're, you know, maybe say that after you get in the door, but um, maybe, <laughs> maybe not be that bold on an interview. Uh, as well, but um, it's got to be a nice fit for, for both people, but yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Diana or Jennifer, would you like to go? <clears throat> I, Diana, do you want to go? Okay, I love these stories. I think this is really cool. All of our stories are so different. Um, I am definitely not going through a career change, um, but maybe more of a role change. I've been uh, with Mid Valley Promotions 14 years, and uh, Peggy O'Donnell, who, if some of you know, and I 
we're not really like a boss employee relationship. We're really a partnership. Uh, from day one, we've, we've built an amazing partnership, her and I. Um, I've always been behind the scenes, more order entry, artwork, uh, customer service. Uh, in the last several years, I've branched out uh, to be more in the community, actually in the community. Um, I've joined some groups like this to see you guys, uh, Deshay, it was so awesome. We worked together for a long time. And then when I met you putting face to a name, yeah. you know, I'm always so behind the emails, but um, my boss, Peggy, she's getting to a point in her life where she's uh, thinking about retirement. Um, and so that's where I kind of come in 14 years of really, really hard, dedicated um, work. I hope to definitely um, plans if they go all as, uh, they should at the end of the year hopefully she'll be able to enjoy her last half of her life with her husband that they'll be retiring and I'll kind of take over um, and continue the women owned business that we have started that I will take over so that's just kind of where I'm coming from not so much a career change because I think I'm a mid-valley promotions for lifer <laughs> <laughs> but um, definitely a role change trying to get out there and be able to talk on Zoom, talking isn't my, my uh, nervous point, my fear. I think it's the Zoom, talking on the camera. That's been a super big adjustment for me. Um, I could talk all day long, but you put me in front of this camera and I'm just like, oh my gosh, where do I look? What do I say? How do I, you know, I mean, it is so different. <laughs> so yeah, that's just kind of my story is just jumping in from the back scene uh, behind the scenes to more of that uh, upfront and leadership. And it's always been my own. I've always considered it kind of my own. I think that's why um, I am where I am today. Um, but uh, it is, it's different, it's a different feeling. <laughs> right, it, um, you know, Jennifer, you are in a unique situation and I know Peggy and I've worked with their, their company. They've done a lot of work for us and we so appreciate them. Uh, a lot of people have trust in Peggy uh, mm -hmm. that has that organization. So yeah, I know one thing you're probably gonna be working on is developing those trusting relationships and partnerships throughout yeah. the community. And I know that Peggy will take you by the hand and help you do that. Uh, but only you can build that trust with those right. partnerships. Peggy can't right. give you that, yeah, that trust. She's so and you're gonna do a great job. Yeah, thank you. Job. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, hello everyone. My name is Diana Ringer and I'm actually brand new to this group. So Felicity, thank you so much for reaching out and sending me a link to uh, participate in this group. It, it kind of feels like a divine appointment, the, um, the topic today, because I was, uh, for 25 years, I was involved in systems. Anna knows me from it when I was wearing a different hat. Um, and uh, I, I was working for where Wells Fargo, had an a extremely serious car accident, uh, ended up working for myself for 15 years in systems because uh, necessity chose, chose that path for me. And then um, about five years ago, I went to an entrepreneur's lab in Stockton uh, with a mutual friend of, of Anna and I, Barney Kramer, and um, really discovered that my true heart, I've always had a heart and a passion for late bloomer, second acts, and the disabled. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a lot of stories around that, a lot of whys around that, but just to, to short friend it. So I, I, one of the things I've really decided um, last year when I had to have knee surgery, I had two knee replacements, you sit home and you get to re reflect quite a bit. And so I said, what, you know, you don't have to work anymore. You're at a point like you're doing this because you want to. So what's really going to get you up in the morning? What, what's the one thing you really can't leave behind on the, you know, in, in the playing field, so to speak, what's making you get up. And for me, it's, it's believing that there is a, a, environment and a supportive network for late bloomers, second acts and the disabled in the business community. I believe that they all deserve an equal voice at the table. And um, that isn't always happening. And, and mm -hmm. so I'm 
building that supportive network within the connected platform. Uh, but another example was I was sitting home and I was kind of doing some bird dogging for a friend of mine who was looking to add some products to, uh, to their portfolio for Nevada corporations. And so I talked to him, I said, you can't be the king of everything. So let me go bird dog some of the stuff and then you come back. I had no intention of ever supporting the, um, the debt program myself. But when I got into it, when I met um, the Money Max account from UFF, which is a uh, debt acceleration strategy, it's a software that shows people how to pay back their debt in about half to a third of the time that they would by um, just manipulating how they don't have to pay interest on things because of timing. Um, I became really passionate about the money conversation because I think a lot of entrepreneurs, I know I, I kind of skidded away from it, you know, they, just because you're passionate and you have a gifting around business doesn't mean that you're really comfortable at some of those more critical conversations. So I'm able to marry my, my love for supporting uh, people coming into their own at any stage in life um, with how to have the money conversation. And a lot of times startups can be funded out of their own personal budget if they can just not be weighed down by personal debt. So I, I help with that conversation as well, but I certainly relate to all the transitions and, you know, I believe um, that my best is yet to come. You know, there are a lot of story, a lot of chapters in my, in my book, but they're all just kind of leading from one win to another. So very excited about what the future holds. And I think this group is great. I love your energy and so super excited. And I spend a lot of time on Zoom and it's nice to know that people from Modesta are on Zoom too. <laughs> so very, very nice to meet. I hope we could we actually do a face-to-face, -face. What, a, what a change that would be. So, Tim, I would love to talk to you, but I can't even, you didn't even put your last name, so I can't even look you up on LinkedIn. Oh, uh, Dutter, D-U-T-T-E-R, like butter with a B. Okay, all right. I love the as well. So as we do these, um, Deshay and I have kind of a basic outline for these meetings. Um, we usually want a, a topic, a guest speaker, and then we kind of go around the room. Um, but um, I think your topic might be a topic we want to have to pre be presented, you know, how to get out of debt uh, faster or something like that. I think that would be a good one for this group and maybe just a five, 10 minute presentation to get people familiar with it. Um, I don't know how you guys are financially, but I know I you know, go up and down and up and down. My cat one murders me. So, get rid of the thing. Uh, <laughs> so that might be a good topic. And I'll talk to the Shea about that. But what we, want to do and if this group can give us ideas um we, we want to get ideas for topics we want to get ideas for guest speakers i'm sure we all know a person that we're thinking of like hey, hey i'd be a good speaker or my friend amy would be really cool on this topic that this group would like send them to us we, we want to keep it going this is a new group we're just getting started i think we'll get a little more structured as we go on right now i'm kind of digging it because it's loose but you you, you hit the nail on the head um, we do plan on getting together um, as soon as we can, uh, I think interaction is important. Uh, big yeah. networking, and meeting people, and face-to-face. And, -face. Um, and we, we do plan on doing that. This is what we're doing for now. Mm -hmm. um, but I enjoy these because you get to know that people are out there going through the same things and have the same experiences. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I'm in a big city and I look at these buildings and I'm like, what do these people do all day? Like, what do they do for a living? <laughs> like, how do they get here? Um, they're people just like us, you know, they really are. I and mean, that's why I like these halls. You meet people from different backgrounds, ages, diversity, and different experiences. But yeah, we're all human. We're kind of all going through the same things. And that's why I love this group. We like just love checking in, you know, with someone and talking to other people and meeting people. It's yeah. really cool. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll circle back to you. I don't want to say circle back. That seems to be yeah. a new space. But we'll come back to you definitely. I think well, maybe at some point. I don't know. I'm a member of, like, Gold Star. And I know personally, I, I would just love to have some time to to hear like each meeting, like while it's the group is still small like this, everybody just take a turn and just kind of share their heart and their passion and what they do and kind of like a, you know, 10 minute, 10, 15 minute, not just me, but extend that out through the group because I'd like to find out more about Deshay, what she's doing, Felicity, 
uh, uh, Renil, especially. Um, yeah. So I, I think that would be a great way to kind of get to know each other so that we're, we're not, it becomes a real relationship that we actually really know what each other does. Absolutely. I was thinking of that at the beginning of this meeting. Like we should give every person two minutes, say, here's who I am. Here's what I do. Here's what I kind of do for a hobby. Here, yeah. Here's what I'm about. It's got to be kind of yeah. quick. So we'll know it. But um, yeah, I, I like that too. Yeah. Pretty awesome. fortunate so far. I think we've had a few repeats each time and a few new faces each time. And so we would really like to just build on the network and draw the energy in so that we can take a step to make a difference with a project or an outreach uh, into the community as we get off the filter of virtual and back in person a little more over the next few months. We'd like to really have this group have a mark in the community somewhere. So we're looking forward to that. Um, okay. I'm a person that's kind of always, I guess my decision in life was always to just follow the doors, so to speak. And I like Tim, I could sort of see things I think I was supposed to have a part of who I am coming out eventually, but what I was supposed to be when I grow up, I struggled with that forever. Honestly, I've yet to figure it out. Um, I was an at-home mom forever, and that was what I think I was born and raised to do initially. And just one thing after another, I my last one graduated, and I'd done so much volunteer work and, and didn't really give enough credit to the experiences I was gaining and the relationships I was making because the volunteer work I did through schools became community outreach and community relationships. And then my last one graduated and I had people offer me opportunities to, can you come back and do this for us? We'll pay you now. Yeah, sure. That's how I started when I came home in a week and I said, I've got three people offering me money to do this for them. And my husband goes, I'm really happy for you, but you realize you can't just take money from people. You have to figure out what to do with that. Ah, so now I have a business. I didn't know I was looking to have my own business. And then I was invited in to do part-time from uh, the previous CEO of the chamber. I have a project. I need you to polish our, my events. I don't care if you work three hours one week or 60 another, just come and do it part-time. And I said, I'm not working full-time. I am not giving up my business and I'm not going to stop my, my volunteer work because I was on a couple of work. So just, I don't care whatever it takes. Lordy B, I had no idea I would take over his seat one day and I don't have time for some of the other stuff anymore, but I am learning who I am and learning how to do this every day. I'm out of my comfort zone at one point every day or every week, big or small. It's an evolution and I'm very blessed to have a team that they've all come on after I've been there. So sometimes we're learning and developing together and they're all definitely learning new skill sets because we're having to figure those out as we go. And so, you know, the point of evolution and constant learning, I think that is a perpetual path for me, but it's what keeps us, I believe, young and active and energetic. And hopefully if you can keep positivity in that, you'll make a difference where you need to, wherever you're meant to be making a difference is what I like to believe in. So. Yeah. super happy to have you guys and again help us grow this and help us form the roadmap for it and Deshay and Tim are both very passionate and obviously and very well suited to fit some of the guiding light for this um, specific group but know that we have a handful of others that we're also developing women in business tech connect um, I always forget one when I get to this point Felicia whichever one I'm in I forget a different one so please help me <laughs> We have the uh, Modesto Leadership Series. We have Business University. Those are more um, leadership and um, professional development based. So if you're looking to do that as well, those are open. We have something for everyone at the chamber and the chamber is trying to work in all avenues to make a difference in our community, which will in the end support our business growth and economic development for all. So. That's the big hey, Trish, I know we're coming up on our hour and I, I want to thank everybody that that's come as well and I appreciate everybody just speaking up today it's been fun I like that this is loose we're not that formal and I think we sit into so many formal meetings every day and listen to speakers I've, I've been listening to speakers almost at seven o'clock this morning I trying to get some CEs on something because you know I believe in being a lifelong learner but anyway the um I, I like the looseness of this it's a lot of fun it gets us to connect and get to know each other so um, if y'all know of a speaker that would like to come or that you would like to hear that you haven't heard before, uh, that may be in our community, make sure you drop it in the chat box 
Felicia will pick that up. We would love to hear from you. So put your thinking caps on. If you don't think of somebody today before we hop off this meeting in just a minute, um, reach out and email um, Felicia or either Trish at the chamber. And we would love to get your suggestions. We'll do the work on your end uh, to try and get them before the group. But I hope we have a topic each time that we can we can share something about because that, that interaction is a lot of fun and it, um, I'm not just sitting and listening to a speaker all the time. So we're going to do some fun things. And yes, hopefully we'll be out of this in a situation where we can gather sooner rather than later. Yeah, I'm sorry, Tim, go ahead. If we just moved to red, we'll be in orange sooner or later. But we're getting there. It will come. We're getting there. I know. Yes. I'm so glad we're in red. I had a changer. Oh. All right. Anything else? Felicia, you, uh, she put her email in the chat box. So if you'd like to mm -hmm. grab it, feel free to do that now. And again, these are open to anyone. So please share them out. Um, if you go to our website, as we build these out a couple months at a time, the pre-registration link you can find there. Um, and we're using the pre-registration link as a way to keep some control on a very open and public invitation to a meeting. So we appreciate that you share the pre-registration link and Mm -hmm. and your friends and colleagues. And you can also reach out and let us know any topics you want us to chit chat about yeah. over here or to share. Learning yeah. Share yeah. that information with us as well too. Yeah. Yes, please do. All right, thank you all. I greatly appreciate your time today. Great, yeah, have a great afternoon, everybody.